Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Pythonic Accountants. In this show, we're going to show you how the Cerberus library can be used to validate data that you import for various reasons. And so in this example, we're going to use some GL detail sample data that's provided by AICPA, and a repository they have on GitHub. So first, you'll have to install Cerberus using these uh, words here in your command prompt. And once you do that, you'll import pandas and the Cerberus validator. So import pandas as pd, import uh, and from Cerberus, import validator. So now let's go ahead and we're going to download this data. So df equals pd.read csv. And I'm just going to grab this. Let's go ahead and see the head. So this is what we're dealing with. Uh, a bunch of GL detail, a bunch of fields. We're not going to validate all these fields, but ideally we would. Um, and what's nice about using this library is, it, you know, if you have, if you do not have 100% confidence that the data that you are getting is going to be the same type of data every time, or that there could be missing data. This will validate that all of the fields uh, for all of the records are exactly as you expected. Um, so let's go ahead and create four validations here. So we're going to do uh, a schema equals, and we'll do amount type float. We'll do journal ID type integer and then min is 1 million let's do effective date type uh, integer and min 1900101 let's do max uh, 2020 0101 Let's do GL count number int uh, type is oops there we go type is integer and min is ten thousand and max is nine nine nine. Okay, so let's see if how this works. And uh, let's see, initiate the validator. So v equals validator schema. And one thing that we're going to have to do is allow it to have unknown fields since we have a bunch of fields that we don't know what they are. But I'm going to show you what it looks like without that first. And actually, I'm just going to show you uh, an example of... Uh, what, how the validator works. So let's just do v.validate and let's just create a fake record here. So let's do journal, let's do amount and 1000. And then let's see what happens. That's gonna say true. Interesting. That doesn't seem right. Let's try this. V dot allow unknown. This is false. Huh. Oh, I see. So I fed it one of the items. If I feed it V dot validate something that isn't on there, like let's do lowercase amount then let's give it a number that should come back as false and let's check v.errors and it says amount is an unknown field perfect now let's try a few other examples here let's do amount uh, let's do uh, the next one journal ID journal ID and let's give it there we go. That's false because I gave it, it's an integer, but it's below the minimum. So let's do v.errors and 
it says journal ID minimum is 1 million. So perfect, that's working great. So now what we need to do is v.allow unknown equals true. And let's give it an unknown field again, the amount. And that's gonna validate as true because even though amount isn't included, we don't care because we're really just concerned about these four fields. So if it's got new fields that we don't have on there, that's fine. Now, it's not validating that it does have each of these four fields. So let's actually see if there's a way to make sure that it does include all. So let's see, this is the documentation here, requiring all. So v.requireAll, let's try this. So v.requireAll equals true. And there we go, now the validator is false. v.errors. And cool, so this tells us that these four required fields do not exist. Let's add one, and now the amount exists and the others do not exist. Cool, so now we are ready to rock and roll. Um, so now what we have to do is, go ahead and get rid of that. Let's create the dictionary of uh, from the data frame. So df dict equals df dot to dict and orient equals records. And what this looks like is just basically a list of the records in a dictionary format. So like here's the first one, here's the second one. So what that allows us to do is we can go and feed each of these into the validator one by one and have it validate them. So now we're gonna say for record df dict if v.validate record Actually, we want if not v.validate record. Now we're going to print uh, the, actually, we want the, the record number two. So for index record and enumerate df dict, so that's going to return for each one, it's going to give us the item number and then the record. Then we want it to print v.errors. And actually, we want it to print the item number index and v.errors and let's see what happens here so now it's going through each of the items and so far so good it's validating everything is great no problem so far uh oh we ran into a problem with these item numbers so the gl account number it looks like was below this 10,000 amount that we had put in. So let's do a quick check and go df dot alloc uh, 16486, see if that works. And GL account number is 1010. Sure enough, that is below 10,000. So let's go ahead and change this. So uh, we change this to 1,000 instead of 10,000. And let's run this again, see if we have any problems. So hopefully we'll have no problems and no errors and we will have then validated. Looking good so far. Let's see if we can make it to the end. There we go. So uh, thank you for watching the video. Hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did, learning how you can use a Cerberus library to validate the schema of your data from a CSV file. If you liked the video, please click like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any suggestions, feedback, or other ideas, please leave a comment. Thank you, and have a good one.